Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and lately there's been a lot of talk of discussing some of Dr. Brad Schoenfeld's latest work and the things that he's looking into. And for those who don't know who he is, he is pretty much the uh, doctor of gains. That's his area of research. That's what he studies is muscle gains. How do you gain muscle? How do you gain muscle faster? How do you gain muscle fastest? And uh, one of the things that everyone has been talking about lately, at least in the circles where I read on social media, the, the groups that I kind of participate in and watch, there's been a lot of talk of his latest look into how much training volume is required, the minimum amount of training volume to stimulate maximum muscle growth. In other words, basically how many sets, like in roughly the hypertrophy range, do you need to ensure that you're going to gain the most amount of muscle per month that your body is physically going to be able to gain at your current level of hormonal status? Does it matter whether you're testosterone deficient, a healthy 18-year-old male, or some guy who is using exogenous hormones? We're talking about what is going to stimulate through your training, the maximum amount of muscle that you are currently able to gain. And what he has determined is that the minimum is right around the 10 set mark. And that doesn't mean per workout, that means per week, because he's also looked at it and we know that training a muscle group more than once a week generally produces slightly more muscle growth. So the total weekly volume seems to be a minimum of 10 sets according to his data. Now, when I say 10 sets per muscle group, I do mean that counts compound movements also. In other words, your biceps and your latissimus dorsi and your rear delts get stimulated by weighted chin-ups, for example. The squat doesn't just work the quads, it works the glutes. There are other muscles involved. So we're talking about total volume. Obviously, you know, your bench press and overhead press count towards triceps. So 10 sets doesn't mean just 10 sets of isolation. It means overall, as long as a muscle is getting really large amounts of stimulation from an exercise, you can count it towards that. And an exercise can have more than one muscle. Most good exercises do have more than one muscle that they stimulate directly and in a very serious way. But here's where that gets serious, and it's something that people need to factor in with all of this. All of this is great and everything, and we do need to know what will stimulate maximum anything from training. Whatever performance function you are seeking, we need to know for science purposes, we need to know for competitive purposes, what's going to actually give you the maximum results. But what's going to give the maximum results isn't always what's best for your particular life and your goals. And let's break that down a little bit so people understand it. And I would agree with uh, what Dr. Schoenfeld is finding because his data is usually pretty good. He's one of the better researchers out there. I mean, honestly, he tends to do really good work in general. So if he's saying that that's what is going to work, odds are it's going to be pretty accurate data. Now, obviously, that means there'll need to be more research done. There'll be need to be other confirmation, but he's probably not far off the mark. But again, the thing that you need to always realize, it's not always important to you at all times of your life and all phases of your training to train for anything maximally. For example, hypertrophy is definitely one of those things with a diminished return and a lot of guys will say well you only do one set most of the time when you're big exercises some of yours you're only doing three total sets a week and with roughly two exercises per body part you're only getting maybe six sets per week and you guys are absolutely right and you know what i'm okay with that because my goals aren't maximum hypertrophy my goals are good hypertrophy I'm also concerned with a lot of other performance elements. I'm concerned with improving my cardiovascular conditioning right now. I'm concerned mainly with just gaining a little muscle and trying to hold on to my size. I'm not trying to get a lot bigger these days. I want to get a lot stronger. I want to get a lot more explosive. I want to have a more well-rounded performance. I want conditioning. And that's the thing that you have to look at when it comes to going for a maximum anything. When you take any performance element and you train it to its absolute maximum potential, during the phases in which you are doing that, something else usually suffers. Sometimes several performance elements can suffer. That's why we periodize training. That's why we do concurrent style training. That's why you have different methods used by different athletes because there is a price to pay for maximizing one thing. Meaning, when you're trying to peak for a marathon or a super marathon to be the best endurance athlete that you can be and have the absolute maximum endurance so that you can make a 30 mile run, you can't be focusing 
on improving your squat and deadlift max very much during that time period. Something has to give. You can train multiple performance elements at one time, but they're going to be give and take. You can only make so much progress with your body and so many adaptations every week and month, no matter what how good your genetics are no matter how much you rest even no matter how many drugs you put into your body there are physical limits to what your body will progress on in a given time period and so you can only do so many things at once and i would remind you guys that if you are training for maximum hypertrophy you might have some other performance elements suffer a little bit during that time so that's what you have to factor in when you look at these things his data is probably going to be correct i don't think we're going to find it to be flawed in the long term but that doesn't mean that your goal should go towards that at all times now maybe you are a competitive bodybuilder in which case that probably might be your year-round goal other than during your contest prep in which you need to actually cut and lose more body fat. Well, you're not going to be gaining muscle at all during that. You're going to have other priorities, but your entire off season, that very well might be true. And if that's the case, then you might want to actually look at his research and take it seriously. It gives you some good information to work with. But other people need to realize that for a lot of you, not everyone is obsessed with training all the time. For a lot of people who have other things that they want to do with their life, training for maximum performance element, in this case hypertrophy muscle size, might take more time than they uh, feel like committing to something. And that's what people need to realize. There's a time commitment. There's a recovery commitment. There's an energy commitment involved. If you train for any performance elements to its max, you're going to be tired or you're going to be fatigued. It is going to take more time out of your life. And a lot of people love training. Hey, I like training. I like lifting heavy weight, but not at all times. I don't go years and years at a time saying, man, I love training and heavy deadlifting so much that I want to work on my max deadlift every single week for 10 years straight. I've done it for a couple years at a time, but eventually your priorities change. And for a lot of people, you don't want to do that. What people need to remember is that training is a lifelong commitment. And so while right now that might seem great to you down the road, it might not. And what I would uh, tell people is that when you look at hypertrophy training, for example, unless you love being in the gym and there's nothing you would rather do than lift weights, and therefore you need to make sure that you get your 10 sets in that sort of rep range in every week, you know, and spread it out so that you hit every muscle group two or three times a week so that you get those uh, training volumes in and keep maximal muscle protein synthesis uh, turning and helping you grow that if you don't want to do that day in day out then there's another way to look at it what we know is that there is basically an economy with your training results there is basically an amount of work you put in for an amount of reward just like your paycheck at your job you work act do x amount of work you get x amount of money with lifting weights you see a diminished return though you don't get a set amount of money per hour every hour that you work you get half the money that you got for the hour before it for the week. And that's the way to look at it because we've noticed with training and lifting weights at every set that you do, you have a diminished return on how much muscle you gain from it. Meaning you don't come in, if you do one set of bicep curls for 10 reps to, with to failure, with even the same weight, you don't gain triple the muscle in your biceps from doing three sets instead of one. In fact, you don't even gain double. It's a diminished return, and we've noticed that from doing two more sets, you only gain 30 or 40 percent more muscle mass. So it's actually worse than diminished, but if you want to look at it from a diminished returns perspective, because we're talking about something that's really easy to add in a few more sets, it doesn't take a lot of time. It is an issue, though, when you're trying to train your entire body that way, and that's another point I'm going to get to in a minute. Uh, but look at it that way from a work perspective of how many hours would you work at a job if the first hour you put in every week, you get $100. And the next hour you put in every week, you get $50. And the next hour, 25 and it goes all the way down. Well, some people would say, well, I'm just going to do that first hour because I want that $100. Maybe the second hour for that 50 But after that, it's just not worth my time to keep putting in more hours if they're going to pay me less and less. I have other things I'd rather do. I'd rather get, get other rewards for that time. There's going to be another person who wants that money so bad that he will work all the way down to that last penny. He will keep taking that diminished return until he puts in an hour for a penny. And who's right? Neither one. 
that's a personal decision of how much time commitment you're willing to put in and how much work you're willing to put in for a diminished return. And you've got to remember, the more you train, the more training volume you put in, there is a recovery component. There is a risk component. And maybe you don't even enjoy training. And a lot of people go through those phases to where you love training for a year or two or three, and then you get burned out. And you don't like training that much. But everyone needs to train. It's in your best interest from a health perspective to train. And at that point is when you look at it and say, okay, how much work do I need to put in to get in and out and just get the results that I want or I need for my overall health, fitness, or my goals? So you can absolutely look at these things as a personal time and energy commitment versus payout economy. But I will leave you with one other little tidbit. What else is useful for this? Well, how about people who want to be more balanced in some way or they have a weak link, but they're not concerned with everything growing maximally. That's where this becomes really useful because that person can step in and say, well, I could stimulate a little more adaptation and progress in most of my body if I want and come in and do less, but that one or two lagging muscles that I need for some strength element, some performance element for what's something I compete in, or maybe I just think I would look better if I had more side delt or whatever other muscle they feel is lagging, that's the muscle they'll want to come in and say, well, I better make sure that I get my 10 sets every week or a little more for maximum growth in that one or two muscles that I think really need a lot more work. And that's where this sort of thing also uh, can become very useful and interesting for people who have a muscle imbalance. They don't need maximum growth in everything. Maybe they just need maximum growth in one or two muscles, in which case now they know how to differentiate it and you know what's only going to give them 80 percent growth versus 100 percent growth and maybe they can play catch up right by rebalancing their training a little bit so it's also useful for people in that sort of situation and so it does have a viable use for people who aren't trying to just make everything grow all the time so just a little tip there all right guys but that's really all i have to say on that today i hope it's been informative and i will talk to you guys next time